So we're at the part of the podcast where we're going to be talking about fantasy football quarterback rankings and who better to come on than fantasy Flojo. How are you doing today, my man? Hey, man. Great intro. Appreciate you. I'm doing good, man. How are you doing, Eric? You know what? I got no complaints, man. You know, football's right around the corner and I can only take watching so much CFL. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're here to talk about the quarterback position. Now, you you played quarterback back in the day. Um so that's why I wanted you to come on for this one, because you can break down the mechanics, break down the systems, the whole nine yards. What we're going to do is we're just going to start at 10. We're going to go all the way down to one. We're going to say, give our rankings. We're then at the end, we'll say who we're fading and who our sleeper is. So let's start out with, um, with your 10. Who's in your 10 spot? Number 10, surprise, surprise. A lot of people for an honorable mention, right? But, you know, Dak, Brady, those dudes are definitely close. Um, but at 10, man, I got my boy Trey Lance, right? The the hype is real. Everyone's excited. Everyone's fired up. We all know what the cheat code of fantasy football is, right? It's that rushing upside. So you got a player like that who we've already seen in past games, right? Uh, I think in two games he, he, he had 150 yards total. So if we play that out for a full 16, 17 games, man, I mean, I think his floor is 600 yards rushing. The weapons that the Niners have on offense, right? We saw last year, Debo finishes the wide receiver two. Get the ball in those dudes' hand and let them do work, right? So it's the perfect recipe for a rookie quarterback, technically a rookie quarterback, right? Easy throws, bubbles, slants, everything scripted. Get him out of the pocket, roll. Decrease the amount of, of situations he needs to break down a defense. Make his reads one, two. If it's not there, I'm throwing it away or I'm running, right? I believe in Shanahan. I believe in his scheme. I believe he understands that it's easy or easier to help a young QB when you have playmakers like that and you can basically shrink the offense until he's ready. And you know who you didn't even mention? Mr. Kittle. You have yeah. Mr. Kittle, the ultimate security blanket right there. So I think Lance is in line for a huge year. And you you hit it in the head. Big dude that can run the ball. You know, I think it's one or two reads, and then he just puts his head down and goes. So I can definitely see that. And let's face it. Seattle's defense isn't going to be too good. <laughs> Arizona's defense, you know, I'm not a big fan on, fan of. So, yeah, I, I like Trey Lance a lot. I have him at 12, just outside. Honorable mention. My 10, you know, Kyler Murray, you know, rushing production decreased by half last year. Only 423, five TDs. If he's not going to run as much, I think he's kind of less desirable as a fantasy quarterback, kind of like what you were saying. We saw last year how linebackers – weren't rushing. They were just kind of mirroring at him on the offensive line. If he goes and he runs, then I'm all in. But based on what I saw last year, and now I know I missed a couple of games with an injury. If he's not going to run, I don't want him. I mean, look, that that that's completely fair. You got to factor in, right? So, so I get the fade. I get how low some people could be on Kyler. Injury is a real concern, right? Back to back years, my man doesn't finish, you know, season strong. He leaves a lot of people hanging, especially when they need him the most. Uh, but points per game, I think he's the top three quarterback. Yeah. Like, you got to basically understand, like, my man's ankle was busted. Before that, it was his shoulder. They're going to limit his rushing. But I think, actually, when he came back from injury, he ran a little bit more, which is surprising. So I, I'd like him. His deep ball accuracy is, is one or two in the league behind Brady or ahead of Brady. Like, throws a beautiful ball, settling in the offense, just got paid, right? So it, it's, it's kind of like – where you at, bro? You know what I mean? Like we're investing in you. I know the whole tape thing came out and it, it was a little scandal, but, but I like how we handled it. Right. Like I didn't get here by just being a great athlete and a, and a nice thrower of the football. Like I accomplished a lot in my career and it didn't come with not study. So um, whether or not there's, there's most, there's gotta be some smoke to that, but I do believe my man hopefully takes that next step, becomes a professional, becomes a leader of men and does what he needs to do to take that franchise to the level that they're paying him for. Yeah. Yeah. I totally get what you're saying. It's just, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Plus, didn't it, what, what's it, Hollywood got arrested over the weekend for, hey, well, um, he wasn't going that fast. He was already at practice the next day. So, so, but I'm just saying, like, I don't, I don't know. And like, maybe it's my hatred for Cliff Kingsbury. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So, who do you have as your number nine? Number nine, I got my boy Matt Stafford, right? We have, you know, I think he finished top five last year, top five or six. Um, 
shoe in, right? Shoe in to be top three in yards passing in the NFL again this season, right? The addition of Allen Robinson, who is one of my favorite, favorite targets this year. Cooper Cup obviously is, is the best or one of the best receivers in the league. Um, Sean McVay, you know, Matty Stafford, they're on the same page. They just want to chip. Defense got better. Cam Akers coming back. Like weapons galore. So add in a player like Allen Robinson, right? We forgot. Like he mailed it in last year. He got out of town. He got exactly what he wanted. He went to a Super Bowl contender. Um, however you want to break that down for him, mailing it in, he got what he wanted, right? So now he's going to – I think he's going to make sure we all remember the player he was on the Jags. Right, where he was winning people chips, special athlete, that back shoulder, those one-on-one balls where my man is dominating and he is going to come down with the rock. He's proven that year after year. Going from a Matt Nagy coaching to Sean McVay is probably going from like White Castle to an elite steakhouse. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> Some Wagyu for yeah. sure, yeah. <laughs> like it's just – he's just going to be in a great, great position. Actually, in the, in the league you and I are in together, he was actually my first pick. I got him at the back end, I believe, pick nine or ten. Um, I think he's in line for a great year. I'm a little worried about Whitworth, though. Um, you know, that's that's my one worry about them. But with the short passing game, and, and we'd even mention Tyler Higby. You know what I mean? Van Jefferson. You know, they have weapons galore, and I think they're going to pass the ball. I love Stafford a lot. Uh, my number nine, the ageless wonder, Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah. I think the defense isn't going to be as good as it was last year. I think losing Sue is going to hurt. I think they're going to be throwing the ball. Just I'm not saying they're going to throw it 719 like they did last year. They're going to run the ball a little bit more with Fournette. But with the defense being as bad as I think it's going to be this year, I think he's going to be forced to throw. And if you can piggyback him with Mike Evans, I think that's a sneaky little play this year for fantasy. Stack's beautiful, right? Mike Evans, one of the most underrated receivers in fantasy. I think, what, six consecutive years, 1,000 yards, and, and I believe 10 touchdowns, but I know for sure 1,000 yards. Like the dude just does work in his sleep. Um, no Godwin hurts for sure. Signing Julio, right? We, we can't be too excited, but you know, Russell Gage was, was a, was a deep sleeper. Here's the thing. Brady has made it happen with a lot less talent. So you, you can never count him out. I did that. I think two years ago, I was like, Brady's done no way. And like, he proved me wrong. Right. So I will not bet against Brady. Um, I just don't know if they're going to throw the ball 700 times again. And I'm a little worried about Chris Godwin. Can, can Julio stay healthy? If Julio can stay healthy, like, I don't know, man. I think maybe we have to reevaluate Brady. But right now, today, as we speak, um, I'm not mad at you for ranking him there because he's, he's still the GOAT. Um, who's your number eight? Joey B, right? So I, I love Joey B. We saw what he did last year. But I think as good of a season as he had, uh, I believe he was wide receiver, uh, excuse me, QB six or seven. Um, and, and like the dude balled out, right? Uh, I think he had the second most attempts in the league. You know, weapons are amazing. Their, their pace of play is, is really slow, though. So that's what I'm a little worried about um, and the lack of rushing upside, right? So you, you got to bring him down just a little bit, in my opinion. But the dude, he's accurate. You know, he stands in the pocket. He delivers the rock. He has playmakers. He has, you know, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, who possibly could be the best one-two punch in the league. And, uh, you know, you don't bet against talent like that. And, and, and Joey B's done it his whole career, bro, right? LSU came into the league, balled out, went to the Super Bowl, surprising win against KC, but he, he got it done. So you can't take away um, anything from the dude. I just wish there was a little more rushing upside because you know that's the cheat code. Yeah, I wish he would run ball more. I have him a little bit higher than you do. I, I'll i break down why I have him as high as I do in a little bit. My eight is Stafford just because I'm afraid of Whitworth. That's my Because Whitworth is like He's just a dude. And you replace him with Joe Notenboom, who's never started before. That's a little bit of a concern with me. But, you know, and and I'm not going to lie. I had Stafford as four, but then all this forearm stuff came out. When was it yesterday or the day before? Maybe panicked a little bit, moved him down to eight when I updated my stuff. But I think Stafford's in line for a huge season. Love Staff, man. So and look, man, I think that's that always goes, you know, untalked about. Right. The offensive line is not sexy. No one cares. But it's the glue, man. It's the foundation. And nothing happens in the NFL without the big dogs, right? O-line, D-line, the trenches is where everything happens. If you can't control the line of scrimmage, if you can't execute blocks, <laughs> nothing works, bro. So I completely get it. Whitworth is, you know, talk about longevity. My man's one man of the year. Like, great example player in the NFL. Mad dudes looked up to him, gave back. So that, that's a cornerstone piece in your locker room, too, and, and not only just on the O-line. Um. 
who's your number seven? Because I just got a text message about my number seven. I may be moving down a little bit. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so one of my favorite, favorite plays this year, and it might not, it's probably not surprising, but Russell Wilson, right? He's, he's, uh, we're having visions of Peyton Manning going back to the Broncos, right? Twilight of his career. Um, Corlin Sutton, Jerry Judy, Javante Williams, right? I just believe, like, here's a great stat about Russ. Since 2015, okay, this man has had a wide receiver 15 or better every single year, right? And some years he's supported two wide receiver ones. So it's like, Corlin Sutton's going to eat, Jerry Judy's going to eat, Russell Wilson is going to do work. Like, 35 touchdowns is his floor, and, and the ceiling is, I don't know, maybe 47, 48, maybe 50. I just love the situation. They got a great young team, good defense. Um, Russ is still that dude, bro. So I think he's in, for, in store for a really big year, and, and that's one player that I will be reaching on um, uh, compared to ADP. And the big thing is all those teams are good. They're all going to be shootouts. You know what I mean? It's not going to be point. like yeah. uh, like my my Lions playing with a bunch of has-beens all year. You know you know what I mean? Like explosive offense. So there's going to be shootouts. So I like Russ a lot. I actually got Sutton in our, in our league. You know, like I, I love Sun this year. You stole all my players, it sounds like, bro. Um, my number seven, and I actually just got a text message about this guy. Um, Jalen Hurts. You know, I like the rushing upside. I like the RPOs. He has looked bad in camp. One of my friends, uh, he does some security for some guys on the Eagles. And his text message to me was Jalen looked like effing shit today. So, you know what I mean? Like a Nick played ball, Nick played SEC offensive line. Nick knows his stuff. Um, I'm a little worried after getting that text message because I wouldn't get that text message unless there was like serious legs behind that text message. I may have to real evaluate this. But yeah, just the rushing upside and the RPOs he does. That's why I have him at seven. So I, I completely blew past Hurts. So that's on, that's my bad. Uh, Hurts, I had at eight. So I completely understand you. We're not drafting Jalen Hurts because of what we've seen arm talent wise, right? Yeah. My man isn't very good. Accuracy, ball placement. Um, that team tail of two seasons, right? The beginning of the season, they were throwing the rock. Second half of the season, lowest passing volume in the entire NFL. AJ Brown definitely helps. Okay. The dudes a stud, he's mad efficient. Is there going to be enough volume? And is he going to continue to be effective on the on the ground? Because it doesn't take a, a brain surgeon, right, to watch this dude's tape when you when he throws the ball and you're like, eh. Yeah. So, like, I can completely see that text coming from your boy. To me, that doesn't surprise me because I saw that um, last year, right? But the idea is insulate him in, in, in that offense where you – similar to Lance, right? Limit the amount of reads. Help him be an athlete and make plays to move the chains and help your team. And it's not dropping back seven steps – Right. Reading, breaking down the whole defense and delivering a 25 yard out on point like that is not his strength. So uh, I'm not drafting him for his accuracy, but there is still some concern there, man. And, and to be honest, he's, he has not been on one of my teams yet. So I got him last year. I think I got him last year in one of my leagues at the 11th, 12th round. I'm looking. I have fantasy pros pulled up. Uh, his ADP is 65. That's a little too high for me, I feel. Um, a lot of people love him, man. A lot of people love him. Um, who is your number six? Okay. So sorry. Lance was 10. Staff is nine. Hertz is eight. Burrow is seven. Russ is six. So go ahead and give me your six and we'll catch back up. Cause that was my bad. Uh, I put Dak, I put Dak at six. Um, he didn't run as much as he did in the past last year. I feel that's because he was coming back from that devastating ankle injury. I think he'll be more comfortable on the field. He'll look to run a little bit more than he did last year. I think the Cowboys defense is in for some crazy regression. They just, I mean, you can't have as many turnovers as they did. They lost Gregory. They're not going to be able to get to the quarterback. I think they're going to give up more points. Thus, there's going to be more pressure for him to throw the ball. Zeke's a year older. Pollard, you know, isn't growing anymore. You know, he's still that, you know, he's like a, I don't want to insult him because he is bigger than Darren Spoles, but I don't think he has the build to be a lead back. Um, yeah, so he's he's light in the pants, yeah. right? But super athletic. My man can move. Uh, we we saw what he is on the field, right? He moves at a different speed than most players. He can house at any moment. Um, I think Pollard, they're running out of the slot. So my main concern with Dak, and like I said, him and Brady were honorable mention for me at 10. So I do like him as a player. Uh, one of the highest passing volume offenses in the league. They got Dalton Schultz, who's, who's nice. Like CeeDee Lamb and Noah Amari Cooper, right? So everyone, 
CD Lamb is is he going to finish top five? You know, we all thought that last year and it didn't happen. Um, Dak splits with and without Amari Cooper aren't great. So, in my opinion, like CD's a nice player, he's going to do work, but I don't. I'm not sold if he's the alpha, bro. Like I don't know if he could dominate and do work like that to where everyone knows the ball's going to him. And now it's like make a play, bro, because you're that dude. So I know he's flashed, but on a consistent basis, especially when we're on the slot, like how many TDs is he really going to catch? And I don't know if he has that dog, bro, because like it seems like he kind of checks out, maybe gives up on some plays, you know, a little too pretty. Um, I know it's the, the diva wide receiver position. I get it. I just don't know if I'm completely sold on CD, which is the reason why I'm a little bit lower on deck. I hate CD Lamb. I absolutely, <laughs> I absolutely hate CD Lamb. I was really low on him when he came out of college. And I completely get everything that you're saying. Uh, who's your number five? So the guy you faded, right? Kyler Murray. Um, so here's the thing, bro. So I believe – you know, with the contract he got right there, there was a lot of stuff that came out, um, you know, regarding his film study. And I think we already mentioned it when you mentioned Kyler, but, you know, deep ball accuracy, points per game. Like my man is a top five player um, in most metrics, right? So let's just give him a, a 450 rushing floor, right? That's, I think, what he had last year. I think before that it was almost 600. So you give me that. I know Kingsbury, a lot of people don't like him. Um, once D-Hop comes back, the additional Hollywood Brown, Right. Rondo Moore's emergence. James Conner underrated in the passing game. A lot of people forget James Conner is a nice receiver. Right. Oh, they gave him the ball at the five and the ten. And that's why you have 15 rushing TDs. Yes. OK. But they, they purposely didn't sign Chase Edmonds and they paid James Conner. There's a reason for that. So I do believe Jay Conner is super undervalued this year. Really, really nice receiver. Um, they got weapons, man. I, I just Kyler's my guy since he came into the league, dude. And, and, and a lot of people hate on him. I understand why, but I'm still I'm still in. My number five is Lamar Jackson. And the reason I have him at this is this, he's coming off his first major injury ever. So is he going to be a little hesitant to run? You know what I mean? Like he was on pace last year before the injury for another thousand yard running, running season. But I just don't know, are the Ravens going to limit his running ability, running attempts because he did come off of this injury? I'm a big Duvernay guy, the kid from Texas. I think he's going to be actually their number one ride receiver. Um, I just, it's just, I'm worried about his lack of rushing attempts. I guess that's my thing. Are they going to limit him? Is he going to be scared to run after his first big injury? But the guy is the most athletic quarterback in the league. So I have him at five. Um, what do you think of Lamar this year? I'll uh, I'll let you know what we think of Lamar when I get to him where where okay. he's ranked to me because okay. I got a who's couple. Your, who's your four? So my four is Patty Mahomes, right? Yeah. Um, literally, you know, he has to always be in the conversation, right? His splits last year, he's human, um, but I think he still finished top five. Losing Tyreek hurts, man. Like those big plays when when he's struggling and he's you know eighteen for twenty four for one hundred and eighty nine yards, and it's the end of the third quarter almost. Like that happened quite a bit last year. And it's those big plays, those scrambles, those backyard. I know Tyree can outrun everybody and I can out throw everybody. And that's what I'm going to do. So Nicole Hardman, you know, nobody's Tyreek, bro. Tyreek's a really special play player. Um, people hate on him. People don't. People love him. You can't replace what Tyreek does, right? That's a given. But Pat Mahomes is good enough. The signing of Juju, Juju, one of my favorite mid-round receivers this year, man. I do believe he's going to finish top 15, 18 or, or better. Right. So Juju is a guy that I love. Travis Kelsey. I mean, we mentioned Mike Evans, bro. Is there anyone more consistent? You know, the, 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 the tight end one consecutively, man, the dude just does work. So the safety blank is still there. Juju can operate as the one B. Um, Juju's still young, man. Juju's a good player. So I still love Patty as a talent, as a player. He takes a hit 100 percent because of Tyreek. But um, you still got to keep him in. Obviously, I got him at four. So my four, I went with Jersey Joe, Joe Burrow. Um when I was doing like my projections and everything, just math wise with where I have Higgins and Chase projected, I have to put them at four. You know what I mean? Because I have I have Chase as my number two and I have Higgins as my number 11. Nice. So if I just add up those math, I have to have him at four. Um, I am worried, though. My stat was this was. Uh, most of his production came off of just you know, throwing it up to chase when they blit, when they were blitzed with the improvements in the offensive line, I don't think that's going to happen as much. So I'm kind of talking myself out of putting burrow this high. Right <laughs> now. Yeah. And you mentioned the slow pace. I mean, they were first 
well, it was something crazy. Like their first and early down run rate when they had a lead, like first and early down run rate when the score was tied. So, I mean, just the way Taylor is, he just doesn't like to throw it that much. But with where I had the projections of Higgins and Chase, I have to put Burrow this high just just based on math. So, yeah, man. So, like, I, I don't I'm not mad at that. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, the, the lack of rushing upside uh, hurts his ceiling, in my opinion. But here's the thing. And, and you mentioned that production, right? I think Burrow had two games with one five, five twenty five and five touchdowns. Right. So I think if you eliminate those two games, I think he barely squeaked into a top 10 QB last year. I know you can't necessarily do that, um, but but the reality is, is is they did throw quite a bit, and I think we might have seen Burrow ceiling last year, but I also love – I love Jamar and T, bro. I love T at, I think, 10 or 11. I mean, I, I have him roughly around there too. And we talked about special talent, man, with Tyreek. Like, Jamar Chase is a really special player, so I am mad at you. And, I mean, that picture of Burrow's old man and Chase's old man smoking stogies – after that Chiefs game, dude, I freaking, I freaking loved that. I, I love that. Yeah. I'm trying to find that stat. I can't find that stat, but it was like something like crazy. Like they were just at the bottom of the hill with like deep passing attempts, but they had some of the most deep passive yardage. That's basically what the stat was. It just didn't add up. And I think it was because of the weaknesses of their offensive line, which is insanely better this year. Um, who's your number three? Lamar Jackson. So here, here's what I was going to say to you, bro, is like, is he going to hesitate? Is like, to me, the type of player and athlete Lamar is like that does not cross his mind, bro. He's so different. He's so special. That's ingrained in his DNA. So there, there will be no hesitation, in my opinion, for him to get out and do what he does, because that's what makes him him. Right. That's what got him to the NFL. That's what won him an MVP. Like Lamar Jackson is a special player, right? We've seen subtle improvements with his arm talent, accuracy, where he puts the ball, pushes the ball down the field a little bit more. But the reality is, is we're banking on him to rush for a thousand yards, right? That is how Lamar is going to return value. And in my opinion, you know, I love Bateman. Obviously, losing Hollywood is tough. They still got Mark Andrews. You mentioned, you know, Dunervay. They have, you know, Dobbins, Gus when they come back. So they have weapons, right? But I just believe like Lamar Jackson is such a special player. He's so different from everybody else that. He knows that, bro. He he laces him up and he walks out and he's like, I am faster than every single player on this field. And I'm going to enjoy showing you that and busting your ass. You know what I mean? So, like, I just I don't think that that is even a, a question in his mind. You know, as someone that has the Ravens, a good amount of money in the Ravens, 24 to one to win it all. I would love to see that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, my number three, as I put Josh Allen, you know, first QB since Drew Brees to go back to back in terms of top fantasy football score. Um, I think he takes a step back for a couple of reasons. Number one, he had a 35% carry share last year. They brought in Aaron Comer, who was the offensive line coach for the Rams when Gurley had his thing uh, before that back with the bills with the LaShawn McCoy zone system. I think they're going to run a lot more just zone running play. We saw that the last four or five games of the season. I don't think Allen is going to run as much as he did last year. And you're like, you and I have been talking about this whole time, that running upside. And I think with the running upside not there, I think he takes a little bit of dip. And let's face it, after these two years, he can only go down. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. like so, and I don't know, maybe I'm trying to be different by raking him this low, but I, I am at three. Look, man, I'm not mad at you. I got him at one, but completely understand, right? That back-to-back, -back, there's a reason why that doesn't ever happen. It only happened, I think, once or twice, Breeze and Allen. So um, I completely understand that. I think he had his most rushing yards last year, if I'm not mistaken. I think he had like 700 or something. He was their RB1, essentially. Devin Singletary came on late. Um, you know, James Cook is going to be used in the passing game. Like, I, I don't know, though, because what really has changed? You know, aside from like he's big, strong, sturdy. He hasn't gotten hurt yet. Right. So my man thrives in that area where pump, pump, run, design, run, whatever they got to do to get him involved. Like that fires him up. That fires the team up like that's real football. Right. I know we're talking about fantasy, but sometimes in real football, bro, like give me the rock. I need five yards. Like I'm going to get that and everyone's going to be fired up and that's going to push the squad forward with that momentum. And so he's that type of player for the team. Um, but I completely get, you know, not ranking him at one like, you know, JT at one. You're like, it's just what you should do. But like the reality of him finishing at one is pretty low. So I'm not mad at you for that. Uh, but I got I got J.A. at one. I mean, they made some improvements. They got the two guys from the Titans. They got uh, Quisenberry and Scaffold on the interior offensive line. Bill's, Bill's offensive line is going to be a lot better. Uh, who do you got as your number two? 
Your boy Herbie, bro. So I uh, I already know where you're going with your one, right? He's uh, SoCal's finest, right? Lo hey, his hair is back, bro. I love so, his hair. I yo, love his hair. His That's hair what is my back. Hair looks like in in uh, high school. <laughs> it's dangerous for the league when Justin Herbie has long hair, bro. So the swag is back, right? We we've seen him. He's broke records, most passing yards. You know everything that he does, man. That offense. You know, but here's the thing, man. You mentioned that division, right? Division got better. And and ultimately, we're here to win fantasy championships, but they're not, right? So if they have to decrease his attempts, if they have to control the ball a little bit, their defense got way better, right? Khalil Mack, they signed J.C. Jackson. So they're going to be able to hang in that division. But are they going to make the playoffs, man? Because I feel like, you know, they were struggling. They were down. They were chasing points. And that's why Herbie continued to put up numbers. So if the Chargers are a better team and they're running the box, uh, running the rock, and they're controlling the ball with possibly some leads with a better defense, that's going to limit Herbie's upside. But he's still number two for me. Uh, my number two, I want Patrick Mahomes. Oh yeah, my bad. I jumped the gun. <laughs> no worries. All good. All good. So I know they lost Kyrie. I agree with you 100. percent What he's able to do on the field, no one can do. But they did bring in NVS. NVS, I, I think he's four four, so he can still stretch the field. You mentioned Juju, and I looked back. This is the first time Mahomes has had a true slot wide receiver. Yeah. I think Juju is in line for an absolute huge season. I think that is going to help him. I think bringing Sky Moore, who's going to be fa you know, not necessarily facing the best DBs, that's good for him. You mentioned Hardman, who they did lose a second round pick on to basically be Hill's replacement. He's there. They got Kelsey on the defense of the Chiefs isn't going to be that good this year. They lost a lot. I think they're going to be forced to score points. I think Mahomes is going to be looking to kind of rebound because he looked bad that second half against the Bengals. He made, he looked god awful. I think he's going to be on a mission this year and I think he and look at his first four years. 38 TDs, 4676 yards. That's just what he averages in four years. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I I have him at two. I mean, I would love to get him in a fantasy draft, but He's going at 35 right now for a fantasy football pros. I would never draft him that high. That's my only thing. You know, like, I don't know how you feel. Like, if so there's a different mindset, obviously, when you're playing, like, the league you and I are in with the super flex, more value on the quarterback. So, obviously, in a draft like that, you will take out – you will you draft him early. But in a standard league, like, where would you – like, what is – what round are you taking a quarterback? So look, man, that's the that's that strategy, right? If if I'm if I'm not mistaken, I'm showing fantasy pros at 44 uh, for Pat Mahomes, um, Lamar at 48. So this year, bro, like there's so much value late, right? In my opinion, it hurts. And I had Josh Allen everywhere last year. I love Herbie. Like I love Mahomes. Like Lamar to me in the fifth is about as early as I'll consider. After that, man, like I'm legit punting and I'm waiting till seven, eighth, ninth. You know, if I don't get anyone I like, if I can't get you know, Trey Lance late, if I can't get Russ in the, you know, seventh, like to me, punting on quarterback isn't the worst idea, right? Because you mentioned Brady, you know, a Roger, we're going to get into phase, but Aaron Rodgers is probably one of my biggest fades this year. Um, you still got Dak who's going super late. You know, you have players, some people like, um, you know, Derek Carr and Kirk Cousins to me, like if you're drafting those dudes, like your squad better be legit, right? Because those quarterbacks are going to be okay, but they're not going to win you weeks. And, and that's the type of that's the type of player I want on my team. And and I draft different than some people and I have different values and beliefs. But I just I don't want a Kirk Cousins or, or Derek Carr on my team, bro, because to me, it's not going to set my squad over the edge. Um, but this year, I think the number one strategy, man, is you wait. Uh, Lamar Jackson in the fifth is probably as early as I'm going to go. Now, your number one, you already mentioned him. Tell us why. So so Josh Allen. Right. So he. He's a special player, man. He's different. We, you know, I got a little fired up talking to you about him and I just love how he plays the game, right? There's, you know, <laughs> by no means am I comparing myself to Josh Allen, right? But I was a big, a little bit bigger dude when I played quarterback and, um, you know, those plays, right? Those, those galvanizing moments for your team when you're just tough, bro, and you're just doing things to extend drives, you know, to win tough games, man, and to do the things that make a football player exactly that. And he just epitomizes all that, bro. I just love him. His arm talent, you know, velocity, his size, accuracy, being able to expend, expend plays, athleticism, like checks every single box, prove the haters wrong, back-to-back -back QB1. Like, I don't know, bro. Stefan Diggs is a dark horse to finish as the wide receiver one overall this year too. I'm not super high on Gabe Davis, but 
You know, I just I just love Josh Allen, bro. Like he to me epitomizes football. And I'm gonna show you this real quick because you know your boys. I don't know if you know, but I'm a little bit into cards. But I got this right here, right? So this is a Josh Allen rookie kaboom PSA nine. Okay. If anyone wants to know, check out eBay recent sold. And it'll show you how much it is. But I'm all in, bro. He's one of my favorite players in the NFL. And, and to me, he just screams football player. And I like that. Yeah, he's a, he's, he's a beast. He's an absolute beast. Uh, my number one, uh, Justin, Luscious Lots, Herbert. Uh, offensive line is better. Uh, I mean, I mean, last year, 5,000 yards, 38 TDs. I think he can come close to that. And my main thing why I rated Mahomes and Herbert like one and two is I just feel that AFC West is going to be the wild, wild West this year. There's going to be a lot of high scoring games. You have a lot of potent offenses and it's just going to be whoever has the ball last is going to score. And that's kind of why I rated those two, one and two. That was kind of my thought process just because I think my strategy in one of my leagues is I'm going to try to get as many AFC West players as I heavenly can, just because I think it's going to be the highest, highest scoring division in, uh, in football. Now, who's the guy you are fading? So I mentioned Aaron Rodgers, right? I think, you know, losing Devontae Adams, similar to, to, to Mahomes losing Tyreek, right? You mentioned MBS, bro. Like, I'm not sold on MBS. He's going from an MVP quarterback to another MVP quarterback. Every time you look up, yo, MBS is wide open. And my man's dropping the rock, right? So, like, he's not – to me, he's not a good receiver. I know he got paid good for him, you know, to solidify the dough. But uh, And I know you're supposed to follow the dough, but I just don't believe in him as a player um, because he couldn't get it done with one of the best, you know, most accurate, you know, possibly one of the best arm talent quarterbacks in the NFL ever. So I'm really worried about Devontae Adams. I don't know who he's going to throw the ball to, right? Um, I just, I don't know, man. I just don't feel great about him. I love Aaron Jones, right? You know, Aaron Rodgers is going to go to the players that he trusts more. People are high on Alan Lazard. He's okay, man. I know he scored a couple, you know, I don't know if he had 10 touchdowns last year, but I'm just kind of fading that whole offense aside from Aaron Jones because that's the only player I trust. Aaron Jones, a nice, nice, uh, you know, a nice RB3 in my opinion. But I just don't know when there's losing a player like D.A., where the target's going to go, that chemistry, right? We talked about that. I know where you're going to be. I know how you run routes. I know where to put the ball, and I know you're going to come down with the rock. That trust, that, you know, that basically connection takes so much time. And when you lose something like that, I don't care if you're as, as good as a player as Aaron Rodgers, that really, really hurts, man. So he's one of the players I'm fading this year. Uh, mine was my number 10, and it's just based on ADP, like Kyler Murray. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm not going to draft him in the fifth round. To me, I to me, that's way too early to draft him in the fifth round. Lamar, I'm all about drafting Lamar in the fifth round. Kyler, I'm not going to do it just because you talked about Lamar, his mindset. I don't think Kyler has that mindset. I think, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't think, like, he's driven the way Lamar is. So I'm going to be fading Kyler Murray. Um, who is your sleeper? <clears throat> so we got a couple. I know, uh, I know who yours is. So I'll go, I'll pivot a little bit because I also like yours, but you know, Jared Goff, we got hard knocks, right? We got, you know, DeAndre Swift, everyone loves, you know, I'm on say I'm on Ross St. Brown, who I'm not the most high on, but maybe he can grow on me a little bit. DJ Chark is, is, is still a great, you know, not a great player. He's a good player. Who's, you know, getting some love Hawkinson, like they got weapons, right? We seen Goff carry, you know, a successful Rams team, deep in the playoffs to a Super Bowl. So he's not a scrub. We've seen it before. You know, their defense isn't great. They're going to be chasing points. They got weapons. He can deliver. Um, you mentioned that super flex league we're in. Like Jared Goff was one of my one of my targets, man, and I didn't, didn't get him. You know what I mean? And I was a little hurt. So I, I really, really like Jared Goff. I think he has a good, good shot to finish, you know, QB 15 or below. Uh, you know, so I just, I think, you know, the situation, man, and what we've seen with him, you know, being able to deliver the rock. The Lions are hungry, bro. The Lions are hungry. They're on hard docks. I love their coach. Dan Campbell's growing on me. Um, got me a little choked up when he got choked up, given that speech week one of uh, of uh, hard knocks. So I like Goff, man. Um, yeah, I like Goff, too. And as a Lions fan, I, I think we're going to be good this year. I think we got a chance. Um, so this is my thing. Like, um, I looked at it, and I, I'm a big conspiracy theorist guy. And this is my big conspiracy. I feel that Carmichael, who's the offensive coordinator of the Saints, is Bill is Bill Belichick. No, sorry, my phrases is what 
Bill pa- Bill Belichick was to Bill Parcells, Carmichael is to Sean Payton. Hmm. I feel Sean Payton kind of is there, and Carmichael did everything. 2011, when Drew Brees, you know, scored 472 points, fantasy points, Carmichael was calling the plays. 2012, when he scored 437, Carmichael was calling the plays. 2016, when he scored 345, Carmichael was calling the plays, not paying. Now, I'm not saying Jameis Winston can come anywhere near that. Right. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But if he scores, let's say he scores 350, that's QB 12. And I'm happy, like, taking Jameis Winston in the 16th round, 15th round, somewhere around there, and he's QB 12. I think that's a legitimately good for him. And the one thing Carmichael did, and for whatever reason, Peyton hated it, is he would always line up Thomas and Kamara on the same side when Breeze was in the gun. I think that was great. I like Carmichael's play calling a lot. I think Winston's really sneaky. I mean, you even put a little comment in our chat room. I feel like I must have hacked into your notes, dude, during our fantasy. Because, <laughs> like, you always had, like, a little comment, like, when I was, like, I was poaching your dudes, man. So, uh yeah, no. So I, I love Jameis, but here's the thing, bro. You you bet, you gamble, you win people money. Like Jameis feels like when you're in Vegas, you're on a bad run and you're chasing a little bit and you're just like, I'm going all in, right? And you're either going to go home, right? Or, or you're going to win big. So there, there, there is a little bit of risk. So if you take a player late like Jameis, maybe take a Davis Mills, maybe take someone that feels a little bit safer, that's still not sexy, kind of gross. Um because Jameis can ball, man. We've seen it. You know what I mean? But it might look ugly. But end of the day, man, you know, if, especially if you're in a six-point passing touchdown league, like, he can get it done, dude. So I, I, I like what we've seen. It's not like he's never done it before. I'm not the biggest Michael Thomas fan. So, you know, I, I like Olave a little bit better. They got Jarvis Landry, right? They got AK who might not get suspended. You know, Mark Ingram still holding on. You know, so it's like – and their defense always plays well. It's the Dome. So, you know, they're they're a sneaky squad, man. So I, I do I do really like Jameis as a sleeper 100 percent And you mentioned uh Kamara. His defense has one more extension. So it got pushed back to the last week in September, and they have one more 60-day extension left after that. So he could play the whole season, dude. I mean, which is absolutely crazy to me. Um Joe, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you on social media and anything you have coming up, any posts or any uh, live streams you have coming up? Yeah, man. So Fantasy Flow Joe on IG, on TikTok. Um, I believe on Fantasy Flow Joe 1. Your yep. boy officially got onto Twitter, about right? Time, and, and, about time, man. About hey, that's time. a whole nother animal. <laughs> there's a lot of nonsense going on Twitter, but there's, there's a lot of good stuff too, man. So a lot of information, a lot of good people on on Twitter. Um, you know, man, I, I just steady pump out stuff. I try to get in where I fit in, right? I, you know, guest star here. I put a little work here, put in a post here. Um, you know, so I, I kind of, you know, I kind of get around, you know what I'm saying? So um, I'm just excited for the season to start, man. We have some preseason tonight. Um, you know, a little co- couple controversial players that I'm high on that most people aren't. And the best part about it, bro, is we're all just doing educated guesses. And on Sunday, we go and see. That's the best part of this because like, there's a lot of smart people that are right with some stuff or wrong with some stuff. You just take your information and you just like come up, you know, sometimes yeah. you agree, sometimes you don't agree, but that's the fun stuff. So mm-hmm. thanks for taking time out of your day and we will talk soon, my friend. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me on, man.